0500 92 95 00. Call K now. All right, we're going to talk about homeopathy now. Um, now, homeopathy is a particular brand of complementary medicine. It's based on putting a tiny amount of an active ingredient in a very highly diluted solution, uh, sometimes one part ingredient to a trillion, trillion parts of water. It's a very simplistic explanation there. I'm sure somebody will give you a more detailed one. And there are those uh, who swear by it, those who are baffled by it, and those who think it's a load of baloney, frankly. Uh, Professor Edzard Enst from Esther University is firmly in that camp. He says that the NHS should cease to fund homeopathy and it's unethical that it currently does. Now Scotland's quite big on homeopathy. Uh, We have one of the three dedicated hospitals in the United Kingdom in Glasgow and NH Scotland funds it to the tune of a million and a half pounds. Um, But as an unproven and untested alternative medicine according to its critics, is it a great big waste of money that could be put to far better use in a sickly health service? Only the other week we had a discussion about um, cancer drugs being available for men with prostate cancer and they were being denied to people on the basis of the cost of them. Um, So how do you sit that alongside a million and a half quid in Scotland being spent on homeopathy? 0500 9295 00 is the number to call. You can text 80295 or email callk at bbc.co.uk. Let's say good morning to Dr Kevin Smith who's a senior lecturer in bioethics at Aberdeen University. Good morning Kevin. Good morning. Do you think the NHS should be funding homeopathy? Absolutely not. I'm completely with Professor Ernst that uh, that should be stopped immediately. On what basis? On the basis that, I've, as you've just outlined, there's absolutely no scientific uh, basis to believe in homeopathy. It's actually worse than that, though. If you were to accept that homeopathy worked, it would actually be antithetical to science because simply what one is doing is treating patients with um, substances that contain absolutely no molecules of the active, the supposed active ingredient. So really, on grounds of implausibility, Homeopathy is a non-starter, and we can't, we simply can't treat patients with simply water or inert tablets. I mean, it, to, in Glasgow, uh, you know, which is, uh, yes. you know, we have a homeopathic hospital which is funded by the NHS. I don't know if it's exclusively funded by the NHS, but there it is. It's a fine building. Everyone going about their business. Uh, patients being referred from all across the country by GPs. I mean, you know, th- this isn't some kind of uh, hole in the wall, fly by night thing. I mean, this is very much supported by our NHS. So what you're saying is pretty radical here. Well, yes, of course, the NHS has got limited resources, and uh, if the hospital were to close, which quite frankly I think would be a very good thing, the resources would simply be expended elsewhere in proven forms of health care. Right, and, and that is something that you would support? Uh, absolutely. And all the patients who go there and swear by it and say, this has helped me, what do you say to them? Absolutely. Well, it, 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 it's an issue which isn't simple. Clearly, we have people that believe in complementary therapies such as homeopathy, but um, there are good reasons why people actually believe in things that cannot possibly work to do with errors of of reasoning and I think it would be much better if um, healthcare professionals were to do their best to explain to such individuals why they are perhaps mistaken and um, divert them Mm. to forms of medicine that might actually help them. Well I mean it's interesting errors of reasoning is the expression that you use there there are of course uh, GPs who are within the health service who do believe that homeopathy can have some beneficial effect because they will refer their patients to them. So uh, if you're one of them, give us a call this morning, 0500 92 95 um, If you've used homeopathy, let me know the results. And should it be funded by the NHS? It's two minutes to ten. Um, M in Edinburgh says, homeopathic, I swear by it, does more good than doctors can. I pay for it from a lower pension, but I wouldn't even ask my GP in the NHS to refer me. So there's someone who uses it by choice but wouldn't expect NHS funding. And JJ uh, in five says, NHS should spend whatever it takes on the needed service to make Scotland healthy. Um, Helen Campbell has been a homeopath since 1990, I think. Helen, how are you this morning? I'm very well, thank you, yes. Good. How would you respond to Kevin there as far as he's concerned? the homeopathic hospital in Glasgow could shut tomorrow and it'd be a good thing. 
Well, I think that he would find, if he went back to the time when Malcolm Chisholm was going to shut the overnight beds, the outroar that he received was such that it was very quickly cancelled. Where um, would the outroar come from, Helen? The outroar comes from the grassroots. Homeopathy has been used in Scotland for a long, long time. And the most important thing is there have been various phrases which he's used like it's uh, unethical. An error uh, of reasoning. An error of reasoning, no scientific basis. Now, um, science is a a body of knowledge. I myself, I have two homeopathic qualifications. I also have two science degrees, apart from anything else I've ever done in my life. And uh, banding around the word scientific is really um, not helpful in this context. What is important is if the patient gets better. Mm-hmm. Now, who would I, as a homeopath, treat? People come to me who have been to orthodox medicine for maybe 5, 10, 15 years about a particular problem. And what is wrong is an imbalance in the energy in them. Okay. Well, listen, Helen, we're going to get the opportunity to get into this in a bit more depth after the news. But I want to hear from you this morning if you think the NHS should or shouldn't be funding. Welcome back. You're listening to Call K on BBC Radio Scotland. I'm no longer asking you who you think is going to win The Apprentice because you have told me in no uncertain terms that you don't give a scooby. Uh, Fiona in Pitlockery says, I agree with Fiona. That's the other Fiona. The Apprentice is rubbish. Can't stand it. Sheena in Helensburgh, pure rubbish. Waste of time. Uh, somebody else who's this, it's Laura, I hate it as well I can't stand Alan Sugar, the way the contestants suck up to little Al makes me want to bulk and that's in big bold letters but David in Aberdeen lovely David, The Apprentice is a brilliant insight into human behaviour and should be compulsory viewing for anyone wanting to further their career Uh, I'm not sure I would agree with that David, but anyway I do like it, but fair enough I'll keep it to myself, it will be my private pleasure. Uh, So let's talk about homeopathy and whether or not it should be funded by the NHS Uh, the NHS in Scotland spends a million and a half pounds a year on it, Uh, we have one of three homeopathic hospitals in the UK in Glasgow Um, Dr Kevin Smith from Aberdeen Tay University would happily see it close down tomorrow. He thinks it's a waste of money and anyone who believes in homeopathy is guilty of an error of reasoning. Um, That'll be Helen Campbell then. She's a homeopath and she says what matters is that people feel better. Let me know what you think. Do you use it? Have you been prescribed it on the NHS? 0500 92 95 00 is the number to call. Um, Just in case you're not familiar, my very simple uh, explanation of what it is, um, you put a tiny amount of an active ingredient in a very highly diluted solution. So sometimes you've got one part ingredient to a trillion, trillion parts of water um, and that... uh, you know, it gives people a sense that really what good could this possibly do. Uh, but let's speak to Jan and Penny Cook. Good morning, Jan. Good morning. Hi, how are you this morning? I'm fine. Good. I believe, uh, is it your daughter that was treated at the homeopathic hospital? Um, my daughter and myself, yes. We've uh-huh. both been treated there, um, both uh, for conditions that um, the only um, treatment from um, both a normal hospital and the GP was steroids. Uh And my daughter sings and she was told that they could well affect her voice. However, um, we asked for a referral initially for her and she was seen at the homeopathic hospital and she did go a bit screaming and kicking because she thought it was a lot of rubbish. Mm -hmm. But actually when it started to work, she changed her tune. Now she now stays in France and has French children and they're, they're treated by their GP homeopathically. Right. For, in some cases, not always, but mm-hmm. sometimes they get homeopathic treatment. My other daughter um, is um, much younger, and uh, she has a condition which, again, both the hospital and the GP, the only treatment is steroids. And this is very recent, and she asked for a referral to the homeopathic hospital, and her GP laughed in her face. Mm. Now, I don't think that's acceptable behaviour, you know, no matter you know, yeah, the, the I, situation. Well, you I would mean, expect I, some consistency, wouldn't you, Kevin? Sorry, you're trying so, to get in there. So, so, sorry, yes. I mean, firstly, if I could, if I could mention that your description of uh, homeopathy w- was accurate, um, I, I think a, a simpler way to, 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 to look at it, but, but a, a very realistic way, is that most homeopathic dilutions involve such a high degree of dilution that um, statistically speaking, there's likely to be no molecules whatsoever of the original active ingredient. But Kevin, Jan Jan has just given us a real example there, um, that that she and her daughter, and and then her other daughter, you know, conditions 
which were being treated by steroids, which presumably, Jan, you weren't particularly happy with. Well, in my yes. case, I had um, a condition that I used the, the steroid treatment and it didn't work. And I was really getting quite desperate. And I was at the homeopathic hospital with my eldest daughter. Um, and I just, on the way past, asked if they, could, if they would be prepared to look at this. And they said, well, unlike Kirsty's situation, it wasn't life-threatening because she was a very bad asthmatic at the time. Um, um, so I would probably have to wait for my referral, but I should ask for a referral. So I did go there, and it took about three months, I think, for a referral, and they treated me, and my condition cleared up. Yes, now, you see, now, it could be a miracle. It might be a miracle. Need, it, do, it, it, doesn't it might need, not be. It doesn't need to be a miracle at all. Mm -hmm. You see, homeopathy, in a sense, it's an it's an excellent um, scientific vehicle because it does allow us to study why it is that some people appear to get better when, in fact, they have not been treated. Because, uh, as I I've said when you treat somebody with homeopathy you're treating them with nothing and uh, no molecules can cause no effect at all so why is it that people appear to become better um, there are two reasons that are postulated for this one is the placebo effect which, which, which is often bandied around and sometimes may apply however we don't necessarily always need to rely upon the placebo effect to explain why homeopathy often appears to work you see that the disorders that homeopathy often seems to work with are disorders that have a natural time course that tends to vary greatly. For example, asthma, allergies, migraine, irritable bowel syndrome and so on. If you leave a patient who has such a, a distressing condition, what tends to happen in many cases is that they, they will go through periods where their symptoms are worse and some periods where their symptoms are better. They, this may be for no discernible reason. And, of course, if you take any form of um, supposed medicine that just happens to coincide with the time when things naturally improve, then it's a, it's a natural human tendency to assume that whatever you took actually uh, improved the condition when it did not do so at all. So it, it's either lucky timing or, or it's and, placebo. Listen, we've got lots of calls on this. I just want to bring in Helen to, to, to respond to, to, to yeah. that um, from a homeopathic perspective. Helen, um, you've heard what Kevin's analysis of, of it is. I've heard what Kevin's analysis of it is, and throughout uh, the entire um, speech that he gave, he did not consider what it is and who we are as human beings. We are multidimensional human beings who function on many different levels, and it's because of that that homeopaths, when taking the case of a patient, looks at the mental, the emotional, and the physical symptoms. For example, if somebody has a problem with diarrhea, the first thing I would want to know is how they feel about life and what their emotions are and when did it all start and what is the process of living. You see, scientific, in inverted commas, as quoted by um, pharmaceutical companies, for example, would be what happens in a laboratory at a particular time. Now, if it's a specimen from you, what happens in the laboratory is at an entirely different time to who you are now. But, Helen, you often hear people saying that complementary therapists uh, are, are generally more um, sympathetic and take a more holistic approach, and people feel uh, much more kind of cared for in their hands, and I say that with no disrespect to, to conventional GPs, but it is something that you often hear. But at the end of the day, you know, the remedy that you choose to give them, it either works or it doesn't, doesn't it? I mean, it's either an effective... Uh, you know, drug in, in the broader sense, or it's not. Kevin is saying it's not. It's so highly diluted. It just can't do anything. That's well, right. That is absolutely incorrect. When people come who have had a problem, say, for 10 years, and um, they can't get better, it could be asthma, it could be migraine. For example, what is better to take a tablet to stop a headache or to stop the headache coming in the first place? And that's where study of the individual will find out where, when and why the individual gets But see, I'm sure Kevin would, would, well actually I shouldn't really say this, but Kevin, I imagine that, that you're perfectly happy with the study of the individual uh, and being able to sort of tie uh, up all the kind of relevant uh, factors. But uh, absolutely. at and the end of the day, what you hand over in a wee bottle, Helen... It, it seems to be irrelevant from that process. And, of course, all good health care should be broadly what, what you're perhaps describing as holistic in terms of, of course, you take account of the, the patient's 
background and so forth. Because, for example, a case of diarrhea could be due to an infectious agent. Did we have to choose diarrhea, people? Or <laughs> <laughs> Indeed. Or it could be due to, to stress, because stress can lead to gastrointestinal uh, changes that can lead to diarrhea. Um, so, of course, a- any bona fide physician will take account of all the factors surrounding the individual person, and I don't think anybody would disagree with that. But uh, as you've just said, to follow that up with giving a, a, a dummy preparation to the patient seems to be absurd and indeed misleading. Okay, it Helen, I know, you, I know you want to come back in that, Helen. I will, I will allow you, I promise you, a dummy preparation, I know it's it probably making you jump up and down. But we've got lots <laughs> of experiences and let's just, let's just hear from folk. We've got Anna Marie who's in Berwickshire somewhere and then we'll speak to Grace and Kay, hopefully we've got time. Morning, Anna Marie. Morning, Kay. Morning, how are you this morning? Um, on a good day. Right, okay, so you've got a condition that, that uh, can affect you on a day-to-day basis, yeah? I have, I've got ME, and it was mild in 2003. I was diagnosed in 2007 when it was very severe. I slept on my bathroom floor for 18 months, mm. couldn't really move or anything, didn't get very much care from the GPs because they have to be jack-of-all-trades, master of none. They didn't know what was going on, and I couldn't talk to them. Um, I was referred to the Glasgow Homeopathic Hospital in 2008, and it's because of them and because of the homeopathy that I'm on that I can get up, I can wash my, my hair, I can brush my teeth, I can talk to people, I can concentrate. You absolutely credit them with your, your, well, your I totally. say recovery, but um, clearly it's something that's ongoing, but you're, the huge improvement in your um, health. Yep, I don't take any um, Western pharmaceuticals with the exception of aspirin. Right. Um, Yes, you see, I, I, I mean, again, it's difficult to comment on anecdotal cases, and that, that's how complementary medicine in general, and homeopathy in particular, tends, tends to find so-called evidence for, for its no, creed. No, I'm sorry, it's Dr. Smith, can yes, I just cut in a second? Because one of the things that you're promoting is the taking away of my choice of what I want to be treated with and how I wish to be treated. Now, one of the things that science has done, which I don't deny science is a good thing, it takes things forward, it progresses, and it should always progress. But they said the atom was the smallest thing. Then they split it open, and lo and behold, there was all this stuff inside. So yes, molecules uh, to a molecular level does not necessarily mean to say that you know everything. Mm. Don't start ca- on the Hadron Collider, Anna Marie, because <laughs> you'll lose me on that. You will. It, it's not. A, it's not a case of knowing uh, of, uh, of knowing absolutely everything. It's. Um, it, it does not just go against uh, scientific understanding of um, the particular theory of matter that uh, to, to, to believe in homeopathy. But it is against simple logic. It's quite clear if you dilute something until it no longer exists, then that something can no longer exert a biological or physical effect on the body. But uh, can, I, can I just go back to Anna Marie and ask you, I mean, um, I'm presuming that you, that you felt that the treatment you received in the round w- was positive and good, but do you think that you were given a specific homeopathic remedy that had an active and positive impact on your condition? Because, I mean, Kevin would say it was a dummy agent. Yes, because there are things that happened to me that, that you, you just couldn't explain. Right, okay. Well, you see, you can explain these things because quite aside from the, from the placebo effect, we have what I described earlier as the natural time course of conditions. And, and ME, while extremely distressing when it's um, at its acute phase, and some people unfortunately do, do, do not suffer from um, periods of, of, of remission, but nevertheless, ME in general is a condition that, that can wax and wane for no known reason whatsoever. And um, also something else, Kay, but, no, but Kevin, the, the funny, just a comment, you're... you're yeah. You're saying, you know, how can anyone believe that this tiny, tiny uh, amount can be diluted uh, so much and actually do any good? That's ridiculous. Now, okay, you could go down that path. But you're kind of asking us to believe that Anna Marie happened to walk into the homeopathic hospital at the right moment. Ah, well, you see... Is that not just as weird? There is something in that. No, no, it's not really, because um, what what you actually said earlier was it's it's just good fortune or luck that the person has happened to go to a homeopathic practitioner at the time when Mm, their symptoms were acute. Whereas, actually... um, what tends to happen is that um, people become naturally more dis- distressed and, and desperate for some help when their symptoms reach a particular peak. And it's at that time when they naturally tend to, tend to seek, for example, homeopathy. But of course, if you think about it, that's... Uh, having failed, the, having let, let failed to find up. relief at, elsewhere. At, Hang on, Dr. At, Smith, no, because... Um, at, the pe- at the peak of the, the, the symptoms, naturally what's going to happen following the peak, quite naturally, is that the symptoms will then decline. So you see, there is a natural tendency for people to seek homeopathy at the peak of, a, of an acute phase and then they think that the homeopathy has worked when in fact it's simply been the natural time course of the disorder. 
Listen, I'm going to Can, can do... I just answer that? Yeah, go on then. The, the, first of all, years ago, I, was, I suffered very badly with hay fever. And my mother, who is Dutch, and she gets treated with homeopathy alongside Western medicine at her GPs, got a remedy for me, which was homeopathic for hay fever. I took it for the year of hay fever... And then the following year, I have never had hay fever since. Well, that, that's an excellent example. And, um, <laughs> of course, we're looking anecdotally, but let me, let me give you a counter-anecdote to, to that. And th this actually uh, applies to myself. When I was younger, I used to suffer from, from hay fever and... Um, it, 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 it was quite troublesome. Actually, however, I didn't um, seek any uh, conventional or certainly not any alternative therapies. I just kind of lived with it. And um, one year, I found that um, I no longer suffered from hay fever. It had just gradually gone away, and happily, it has never come back. And with uh, conditions such as allergies, such as hay fever, that is a not uncommon outcome. Now, imagine if I had um, been so minded as to, you know, non-scientifically minded in other words and I had tried homeopathy just at the time when by luck my uh, hay fever was declining I would quite possibly have believed that that homeopathic preparation had helped me okay. when in fact it had not I see we come in. listen I'm, I'm going to bring in uh, another experience and then I want, I want to speak to you Helen about the testing of it because it's something that's often um, it's often discussed you know I mean show us the evidence show us the evidence why can't you show us the evidence but uh, as everyone knows I've got a ridiculous policy of favouring anyone called Kay um, uh, hi Kay and Ky Clyde Bank hello there uh, hello uh, how are you doing this morning fine fine good have you used homeopathy Yes, I do. Um, I explained to when I was speaking on the phone that I go to seven different clinics because of different problems that I have. For instance, I've got psoriasis mm -hmm. and I go to the Western. I've got psoriatic arthritis and I go to Gant Naval. Uh, I've got diverticulitis, I'm diabetic, I've got all sorts of things. Right. My problem is that none of the clinics have joined up writing. There is no di they don't discuss with one mm -hmm. another what's wrong with me. They all prescribe their own medicines, and I'm sure some of them, if not all of them, are not helping me. I'm going into the homeopathic hospital on the 16th of April for five days where they're going to look at all my medicines. They're going to do testing to see if any of them have an adverse effect to me. Right. Now, that doctor can say what he likes. The National Health Service, for me, does not work. What? It's creating more problems for me than anything. I need joined-up writing. I need somebody to look at all the things that are wrong with me and what medicine, if any, I should be on. Well, te testing of adverse effect of, of, of drugs is really in the domain of science. It really has nothing to do with homeopathy at all. Well, but, but also, I mean, taken away from that, I mean, Kay, it, doesn't, it sounds to me as if you're not particularly happy with the way that you have been treated with all your various conditions and that you it's would like somebody to take ownership of it, if you like. But then is your criticism not with the process rather than... No, I, I think I spend my life going to different clinics and none of them are helping any of the ailments that I've got. Mm. At least I feel going to the homeopathic, whatever medicine they're going to give me is not going to have an adverse effect and it may well solve some of the problems I've got. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm not daft, but I don't want to spend my life going to clinics that don't talk to one another. There's no joined up writing. Mm -hmm. The health service stinks, in my opinion. Yeah, well, you obviously haven't ha had a good experience, Kate. But, I mean, let, let me bring in Helen again on that, Helen Campbell, who, who is a homeopath. I mean, clearly just from some of the... I mean, I've got lots of texts here that I haven't had a chance to re read out, Helen, and we've, we've heard from Kay and Anna Marie. There is... Um, a, you know, a, a, not an opening. There's an appetite for for homeopathy and other complementary therapies, and and people feel in certain instances that they're not being particularly well served by the NHS, and that homeopathy has worked for them. In which case, if you could just produce the kind of scientific evidence um, that that other medicines like aspirin or ibuprofen or you know whatever have to produce, because we all know that these drugs have to be very very vigorously and rigorously tested why can't you play by those rules in which case fine charge on right scientific evidence is very much down to the minuscule the one item that needs to be looked at in a laboratory 
A human being is a laboratory on its own. A human being has all these different aspects which I mentioned earlier. Homeopathy is not dangerous, as mentioned by Ernst. For anyone to say that homeopathy is dangerous, <coughs> excuse me, when we've had instances of shipment and, th- and um, thial- thalidomide is yeah. really quite outrageous. Yeah, well, Shipman, I think, was a dangerous individual. <laughs> well, well, I, yeah, I think well, well, yes, excuse, is, excuse me, excuse me, excuse me, Dr. Kevin. Smith, you have had your say. Now, homeopathy is made, the remedies are made from items, animal, vegetable, mineral, and Which the, are diluted uh, out until wait, there's no, just, none of them left. Just let me speak, sir. Animal, vegetable and mineral. And they are tested on human beings. You talk about things being anecdotal. In my life, what was anecdotal is that I have a special needs child where orthodox medicine really let her down a great deal. In other aspects, it helped her because she needed an operation. We need both kinds of medicine. No one kind of medicine is perfect in all conditions. Now, there's a question, the question of choice. As suggested, all proposed medicine should be subject to to the tenets of rational testing. And you seem to suggest that we cannot uh, scientifically test homeopathic preparations. Yeah, but actually, Kevin, uh, if you don't mind me coming in as a layperson, I can see the distinction that you are making. And and Kevin, you're saying that a drug has to be tested for its efficacy. And and that's the way that, that we're, we're all kind of led to think and we would go with that. But what Helen is saying is each individual human being is unique and, and to use that analogy as being a laboratory within themselves maybe they're just coming at it from a different direction and so no, they're not going to be uh, tested on the basis that you would test drugs but that doesn't mean uh, that it's still not valid it's just not playing by your rules Yes Kay and if I take that point up there's quantitative medicine which is what is usually referred to as a scientific medicine with double blinds and there is also qualitative medicine and the use of qualitative medicine is beginning to be increased is being done and there is Research available over the, t- the last 200 years showing how and why yes, homeopathic, but, but how clear, and why Helen, homeopathic make, mod- medicine works. Okay. Okay. Helen, you should make clear to, to the listeners exactly how those homeopathic tests uh, are conducted and have been well, conducted, well, listen, as you say. It's I, very I, difficult on radio to get into those kind of details. And to be honest, yes. I'm really interested in people's stories because we've had a huge response. We've got Grace and Dumbarton. Good morning, Grace. Good morning. Good morning May to I you. say how very much I enjoy your programme. Oh, that's I listen kind of most you, mornings. Now, I've just a statement of fact to make. I suffer from osteoarthritis, Mm -hmm. and I am kept pain-free by taking homeopathic remedies. I am a private patient, but I would like everyone to have the opportunity to benefit from homeopathic remedies under the NHS. And as far as uh, proving that it's helpful, I can only say that if I'm not, I don't take it every day, every month, but I have a gap and then when the twinges come back and they're really quite severe, I am phoning my doctor in Glasgow and out comes the, medica- the, the remedy and I feel a great deal better. Mm-hmm. Over what period of time, Grace, have you been um, oh, taking homeopathic medicine? It must be about 20 or more years. Oh, really? Yes. Right. And had you pursued sort of conventional medicine as well? No, uh, well, yes, with painkillers for rheumatism. Right. Yes. Well, of course. Although well, well, I, I don't know that um, you've, you've given me a question there, Kay, that uh, I find perhaps I hadn't gone with uh-huh. that particular... Yes, I think I'd gone with a pain at one time. I'm not oh, so sure right. about that. No, I mean, I wonder pain. if if what Kevin would say to you is that that's just the natural pattern of your disease. Yes, this is why, why I'm thinking so, that when it comes back really quite it can be quite severe and as soon as i'm on to the medication uh, on to the remedy you get relief immediately uh, no i shouldn't say immediately it takes a week or, or so mm-hmm. uh, no, m- m- usually a week and then i feel so much better i wouldn't be without it right. yes but of course that does fit in with the the, the the much more straightforward explanation that this is part of the natural time course of the waxing and waning of the symptoms and it's, it's a much better explanation than to imagine that a preparation that contains no active ingredients is actually having some biological effect so over 20 no, years the timing just happens to have hit yeah. okay, uh, but but may, I, may i say to the doctor 
that would that not apply to conventional medicines as well? Well, indeed, and I don't think anybody would deny that conventional medicines will also interact with natural time course of, of, of disorders and indeed will also have placebo effects. But um, where, na- where, where conventional medicines win out is that they also have biological effects. So one wins twice with an effect of conventional medicine. We get the biological effects and any um, additional effects such as placebo effects. Okay, well, listen, I'm afraid what we're going to have to win. I've got loads of text, haven't I? Grace, listen, nice to speak to you and thank you very much for calling in this morning my apologies to Jerry that we haven't managed to, to get you thanks to Helen Campbell and to Dr Kevin Smith uh, Claire has texted in so the funding should remain for homeopathy I damaged my pelvis during childbirth and traditional medical treatment did nothing uh, despite four years of treatment it was only when I was referred and received a homeopathic remedy from the Glasgow hospital that my condition improved this despite the fact that I was extremely sceptical about the treatment um, Sadie says strange that homeopathy works on animals who haven't read the labels and don't know any better I see lots and lots of response on this one. Uh, just quickly on The Apprentice. Oh, I'm getting pelters. Come on, Kay, raise the bar. Watch paint dry. Much more entertaining than The Apprentice. To coin a phrase, poppycock, says Lindsay. Um, an honest one, Alan Sugar decided from day one in the last series that Tom was to be the winner. Have lost interest. Uh, Chaz says, morning again. Apprentice, nil point. Get it off. It's rubbish. OK, I get the message. I won't mention it again. Speak to you tomorrow. Here's Fred.